Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Carla from Rehan Alawala's World of Connections. And I am here to speak to S. Abdul Rafi Kadre. And he will tell me in a few moments who, what he wants me to call him and what he does. But before he does that, I want to remind you that this show is, is sponsored by the Institute of Peace, which is an online organization promoting peace one conversation at a time. S.A. Rafi Kadre, can you please tell me what you want me to call you? People generally call me Rafe Khadri. So you can call me Rafe or Khadri, whatever you like. Okay. Do they say Rafe Khadri all the time or do they say something a little um, shorter? Well, since I'm a professor, so they call me Khadri Sahab to make it short. Okay. Sahab means Mr. Khadri uh, means Mr.? Sahab, Sahab. Okay, now tell me, what does your name mean? Uh, my name is basically broken in four parts. Sayyid Abdul Rafi Qadri. My given name is Abdul Rafi. Rafi is the name of God, which means one who elevates everyone. One who raises everyone to the next level. Abdul means a worshipper. So I'm a worshipper of God. Sayyid means I am a descendant of the Holy Prophet, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Qadri means I am a descendant of the biggest Muslim saint who was also a descendant of the Holy Prophet. A bit of complex name. And what kind of work do you do? Oh, I'm a first do you have a family yes i have a family i'm actually part of a very extended large family i live with my wife we are married for almost 11200 days i have three How sons many years is that that's 30.5 30 and a half Okay. We got married in January 1990. I have three sons, Latif, Bilal, and Ammar. Latif and Ammar, they are married. Uh, and each one of them has a daughter. So I am a proud grandfather of two granddaughters. Nabiya, who is three and a half, and Arisha, who is just one. Uh, we are eight brothers and sisters, mashallah. I'm now the head of this joint family. So it's like this. And then there is another big circle of my students and friend. So that, that all keeps me very busy. Uh, are you still working? Yes, I'm working. I'm now more towards consultancy and inshallah from tomorrow I'll be starting my research work on agriculture, aquaphonics and dairy farming. We have been a horticulturist for last 600 years. I'm interested in roses, indigo and some rare plants. I want to promote them in my in Sindh especially. Okay. Well, how did you get interested in this? Agriculture or my, I'm a banker. I specialize in very rare subjects like money laundering and financial fraud. I've been teaching mm -hmm. cyber crime to judges. See, uh, reading is in my family. Our family has a library of almost seven and a half thousand books. It's a rare collection uh, with a very unique uh, portion 
uh, a translation of Holy Quran in 92 languages. It is the biggest private collection of Holy Quran translations in Pakistan. So it's in my blood. I've seen my father reading, everybody in my uh, family spending money on books. So now every, even my granddaughters, they are more interested in uh, books rather than in uh, other uh, implements. I just, I've told you, my family is into horticulture for almost 600 years. I saw my father doing it. We have grown coconut. We, we have grown pineapple in small pots. So we are into trying new things. Now, but, I think, go on. Nini, what do you think? You might have an interesting question. Well, I want I want to know more about you and what you do. And I see that you are a professor also. Yes, I'm a professor. Um, I have some strange qualification. I did my MBA from IBA Karachi, the elite business school. I have an honors in physics. I'm a, I'm a certified internal auditor from the Institute of Internal Auditor Orlando. I'm a certified trainer in microfinance. I'm the only professor of anti-money laundering and financial fraud in Pakistan. So these are the subjects in which I have qualification. Otherwise, I read a lot. Everybody in my family reads a lot. And let me tell you about a love story, which Great. I love love stories. Yes. That love story started some 75 years ago and resulted into the marriage of my parents. My parents were cousins and their love story not only included them or their kids, their love story included the entire world. They established Baitul Khair. Khair basically means good things. And it was also my mother's name, Khair Nisa. They established library, they established schools, they established funds to marry orphan girls, they established funds to help people establish their small businesses, they established funds to support people in need of medical help. So whatever we all are doing, in my family, we are into these things. Uh, Batul Khair is now named the, of our organization through which we support, we provide uh, financial support for rations, food. We provide money to people to establish their small businesses, the microfinance. And we make sure that they pay back no matter how small. That money is recycled. Say, for example, if we gave 15,000 rupees divided in three different people, by the end of second year, they all have paid back, paid back, and we have recycled, uh, moved that money to somebody else. So I have worked in a way that after my father's death passing away, when I became the leader, there's an Arabic proverb which says, I became an elder because my elder passes away passed away. So when I became the family elder, I, my father was very old. He passed away in 2016 when he was 80. I'm now 56. I've been a sportsman. Now I only play mind games. So I have established small centers. My cousins or their wives working as my lieutenants in different areas looking after the needs of their residential area where we are supporting, providing ration, we are, we are providing money to establish businesses, where we are providing uh, little money for the uh, health support. But uh, our main project now is only one. We are focusing on one thing in Bethel Khair that people are focusing on education for adults. People are focusing on education for children. What I have realized based on my interaction that there is a large chunk of society where people have to leave their education to earn for their family, to earn for their family. And they never get the chance to upgrade their skills, to upgrade their academic qualification, 
see by upgrading their uh, skills they can earn more so we have recently established uh, 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 an online school by the name of Baitul Khair from where we'll be delivering lectures, sharing content on YouTube for people so that they can restart their schooling from their home and improve their lifestyle and things like that. And um, my second project, which is very near to my heart, is that by the end of 2025, 2025, we should have something around 5 million entrepreneurs, small entrepreneurs, because if there are 5 million into small entrepreneurs, that simply means with each of them hiring four people, it will be 20 million people. We are, uh, lift, we are elevating from poverty. So those are two small of our small targets. I teach money, anti-money laundering and finance. I'm an expert. If I can claim to you, I'm an expert in technology and ex Excel. And that's it. How old are your students for the most part? Sorry? How old are your students? And can you fix your camera so we can always see your whole face? And uh, okay, I need to fix it like this. Okay, good, but center yourself so you don't cut off your face. Ah, I think it's better. Yes, yeah, my good. students, my target students are from normally from 15. Uh, it's illegal to hire child labor, but child because of the poverty, people are still working at very young age. So, if God forbid, forbidden, your parents die, some of them have to start work even at 12 or 13. So, my target is 12 or 13 to 50. Any starting from 12. And I believe by 50, they would have settled down. So we are uh, developing material for people who are 12, 13, 15, 30, 25, 40, 50. And we'll be first focusing on selected subjects like mathematics, English. I've selected a book called Word Power Made Easy. It's an excellent book by Dr. Norman Lewis. It helps to improve your vocabulary and you can learn a lot in one month. So um, we are focusing on basic mathematics because people are generally afraid of mathematics. They are not taught how, what pi exactly is, where is it to use. They are afraid of uh, Pythagoras theorem. Nobody never tells them where Pythagoras theorem is used in your life. So these are my subjects. Hey, you said Pythagoras theorem is used in everyday life. How? Pythagoras theorem? Explain to me how Pythagoras' <coughs> theorem is used in everyday life. Whenever you use a shortcut, you are basically using a Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras theorem simply says, you move certain steps in a straight line, then you take a right or left turn and take some more steps, say three and four. But if you move in an angle, you can cover this distance by moving five steps only. Because you see, sometimes while crossing an area, you move across empty lots of land rather than moving from roads this and this you move across that's the application of Pythagoras theorem Achha, whenever 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 you want to make a strong structure you use Pythagoras theorem all civil engineering is based on Pythagoras theorem take out Pythagoras theorem there will be no civil engineer there will be no building there will be no construction in the world 
I said my target market is maximum 50. Okay, but I know that when I was 12 or 15, that I didn't think about that when I took a shortcut. I'm just wondering how you are saying that that is a normal, natural thing we use every day. Explain it to me. I really am curious. Yes, that's the point. The point is, uh, I would suggest people to watch uh, Sir Ken Barrington's uh, lectures on TED. Well, no, okay. no, no, I don't want to be told that. I want you to explain it. Yes, okay. Jim, the basic problem with our education system is that we are expected to remember things. We are not expected to use them. Correct. So, because of that, most of the people think, what is the use of this thing? Why should I remember? Even if I remember, I'll forget it after once I've cleared my exam. Correct. Right. So, sim theorem simply says, okay, if you move across an area in two vertical lines, in two lines, straight lines, which are perpendicular to one another. Let's say you move five steps in front of you, and then take a right turn and move four steps. So the shorter way to reach that would be to move in an angle directly to your target area and you'll only need six steps. That's simply Pythagoras theorem. Whenever we are moving, we are, whenever we are going from one place to another, instead of ro using roads network, we try to make things short by cutting across the empty lots of land. That's an application of Pythagoras theorem. Okay. That may be so, but why do I need to know that if I'm doing it? If I naturally am taking a shortcut, why do I need to know that I'm using Pythagoras? You need to know. Yes, it will help. Even why? if you don't know, you will continue to do that. Even if you don't know that, continue to use that. But once you know what are you doing and why are you doing one, you will get good grades in exam. I'll assure you that. And then once you have learned to use a thing, you will think, start thinking about its new uses. Okay, give me an example of a new use of it. Like? Have you ever, have you ever, you're, ever, you're, ever, you're the expert here. Right, so you want an example of what? A Pythagoras theorem or something else? Of anything that makes it sense. I don't see why I would even care whether I'm using Pythagorean's theory when I'm taking a shortcut. No, what you don't need to do that. No, they, they'll, help, they'll, they'll help you. They will help you in your jobs and in your businesses. When you are after other experts, asking them for solution, learning things, knowing things, how things are, you can find solution. That's what I have observed from my different students during last 10 years. I told them how that basic algebraic equation works. You must have learned algebra in your inter, uh, sixth or seventh grade. And people often wonder why are we studying algebra? Because algebra tells you to think, calculate things when you don't know what the real quantities are. It will help you to calculate pricing, calculate profits, calculate cost and things like that. Give me an example of why algebra would be important to me. Okay, you've invited three friends and you want to serve apple pie. And I assume that you can prepare apple pie. Yeah, or I go out and buy it. But yeah. then I'll assume that and you'll be making apple pie. Okay. Oh, okay, let's. What is the cost of apple pie per person in your area? 
I really don't know. I don't buy it. Let's say <laughs> it's a five dollar per person. Let's say eighteen dollars. Just eighteen dollars. Eh? You have invited three friends. So what would be your cost? Three dollars multiplied by eighteen plus two dollars of delivery charges. So your cost is three x plus two. Now, if I want, if you want to invite fifteen people, how would you calculate? Fifteen into fifteen times eighteen plus two. I don't see why I need to know that in order to split it up. Why is it so important that I know it, or why is it? How is it going to help me? Uh, it will going to help you when you are starting your small businesses, calculating your costs, calculating your profits, calculating your selling prices, calculating your distribution margins, calculating the manpower required. Okay. I was never into it. I was never into it. But 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 many of my students from the working class they came back. Eh? The formula you explained us back in our class really helped us in uh, reducing our cost. Yes. Have you ever done any business? Have you ever established a business? I'm establishing my own business now, but I still do not see. Okay, let's, why uh, let's, this subject, let's change the subject. We'll come back again. Show me another way that will make me understand the importance of math. Ah oh, ha ha! That's a difficult question. You see, mathematics is the symphony of life. It helps you to calculate, make things organized. It helps you. How? Yes. How? Have you ever prepared a budget? That I haven't been good at, but yes, I've done it. That's an application of maths. Unless you know mathematics, you cannot prepare your budget. So I know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Why do I need to know anything else? Uh, to make things simpler and better, unless you started using things, you will never know their utility. Unless you start, you see, uh, we often ask, call plumbers to do repair works at our family. If you know how things work, how plumbing lines work, we can make sure that they do not go broke often. Learning things why they are is better is more important than only learning thing how to do it. Learning why is the most important important thing. Learning why differentiates between the mankind and every other creation in this world. Because it's the why which has led us to all the improvements, all the innovation. Because man started thinking. How do birds fly? Why can't I fly? Unless you ask those questions, you will never improve. When we, we might have still be living and the storages without a wheel, without a knife, without clothes, without uh, fruits, without rice and everything. I do a lot of things that probably involve math. Yes, but without I'm... knowing that, without knowing that. But once you know what's the math, one, you'll start enjoying things. Two, you'll be improving things. How would I be improving things? Once you know how things are done, why things are done, then you can start questioning, is there any better way? Unless you know the why and how, why, you cannot ask the question how to improve it. I do things that I know involve math every day. Yes. And I could care less. I do the multiplication or the addition. 
and it gets done. Why would math make it easier for me? You see, I appreciate that you are doing things, but you are doing things for the same value as for last 20 years, 10 years. Is it so? Or have you changed the way things you are doing? I made many changes in things that I do. No. Are you doing things the same old way or are you improving things? Doing uh, Improving the way you do them? I hope I'm improving them. You can only improve once you start asking the why. The mathematics. Why of the mathematics? Why is it working like that? Why do you say that? Because uh, why is one question which moved us from people dwelling in caves without any instrument to what we are now building 100 150 story building going and coming back from moon diving and living inside the sea it's the why which has enabled us to do that otherwise we would still be dwelling in those caves and we would have never met where there would have been no communication no computer no internet no electricity I use my computer a lot every day. Yes. I don't consider, I don't think about math when I use it. I just turn it on and I do what I need to do. Uh, I think you started using a StreamYard some one year, or six, seven months ago. Yeah, when Rayhan taught me how to use it and I've been using it. So why are you using it just because Rayhan taught it or you found it useful? It's useful depending on what How I do you calculate it? It's useful. I don't calculate it. I see. How do you know it's useful? It's easy to use. How do you say it's easy? How do you measure? I don't measure. I just know that. How can Canada, you say then it's easy? Unless you measure, you cannot say it's easy or difficult. Unless you measure it, you cannot say it's easy or difficult. You have to think about it. I respectively disagree with you. You have a right. You see, based on my search, we have observed, we start measuring things first without counting. Something is difficult, something is easy. When we delve into it, we use it more, we start quantifying things. This is difficult, this is easy, this is little difficult, this is more difficult. That's what mathematics is. You start calculating, that's what mathematics is. So we have agreed to disagree. Which is fine. We can always disagree to disagree. And you see, it's the disagreement which has led to the, all the progress. You see, you disagree with me only when you start asking why. You cannot disagree me with, with me unless you start asking why. And why is the mathematics? You start calculating things. Okay. Simple as that. Why do you have two cats and one dog? Why not two dogs and one cat? Because I have two cats and one dog. Why? Why not two dogs and one cat? Two dogs is much more work. Yes, that's simple mathematics. Calculated. You start calculating things. But I don't need to think in that terms. So of don't math. think about it. Well, tell me, what do you do? You have been asking a lot about me. What do you do? Oh, uh, but that this conversation is all about you. See, uh, even interviews must be dialogue. Maybe what you do will help me in improving my offerings to the society. But One, this, 
This conversation is all about you, not about me. You want to know about me? You need to interview me. Okay. Now, can I, can I ask a question? Based on what we have discussed, how can I improve using your experience? That isn't my job right now. My okay. job is to find out about you. Okay. 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 You want to learn more about me? I'm a banker. I've been a consultant to Asian Development Bank. I have developed Pakistan's, uh, I've helped developing Asian Development Bank in Pakistan's anti-money laundering policy. I was also a part of the team which wrote Pakistan's uh, IT policy back in 1999. I've done a lot of research on uh, management and improvement of the state of uh, basic education, primary education in Pakistan, especially in Sindh. And in 2003, 2007, I wrote a report in my education sectors reforms report, identifying things that we need to improve our, especially our primary education. So based on that, I feel that we need to improve the quality of teachers. We need to spend time and money on teachers training. That's what missing is. We have been spending money on infrastructures neglecting that teacher is the most important part of the infrastructure i agree teachers are very important but teachers can also be your parent it could be a child will teach an adult and that reminds me of a very interesting incident i was taking part on a panel interview on a television it was on television and the topic was child custody in separated families. Somebody asked, what is a teacher professor doing in a child custody discussion? I said, you see, remember one thing. In case of child custody discussions, a psychologist or a lawyer, they spend five to seven hours in total on that child. Whereas as a, as a professor, I spend almost six hours every day with that child. So there are certain ways in which I know that child much better than their parents. So we are in a better way to help develop separated childs. And, uh, and thank you for agreeing with me. <coughs> Teacher is the most important part of the infrastructure. There are certain cases where a teacher is the only infrastructure. In remote areas, a teacher and five students can sit under a tree and start education. You don't even need a building. If you don't have a building, you can still start the infrastructure. So what I am, I am doing my research and I feel the organization supporting education should work to spend at least 15 to 20 percent of their budget on training teachers. Especially and the problem we are facing in the higher education is that people teaching in colleges and universities are not really teachers. They are researchers. They are never giving any training on teaching in school. Teachers are required to kill, uh, get a BA degree or a CIT degree, but college teachers, they are without any teaching training. They are just subject experts. So we need to spend more on teachers training. Over to you. Thank you. And I agree with you. But it's not just teacher teaching training. Yes, yeah, there are many things, but you must begin with at least one thing. My focus is on teacher because teacher is the front man in teaching. Students interact six hours a day with their teachers. That's the point. I agree with that. Now, we'll schedule an interview of Professor Carla Reichman sometime. No. Yeah, you can interview me. To learn about her experience from the, that part of the world and see what we can learn and implement in Pakistan. Now we can only see part of your face. 
But that's okay because it is time to end this. And one more, two important messages. Happy Noros to all my Zoroastrian friends. It was Noros for Zoroastrians yesterday. And happy Left Handers Day. Okay, Professor, I need to end the show right now. I want to thank, thank you for spending time talking to me. Thank you. Thank and you. if you uh, want. I've learned a lot. I've learned to disagree. Well, we can always disagree as long as we agree to disagree. Yes, we agree to disagree. And what I understand that by disagreeing, you can improve. Right. That's your thoughts. Anyway, at this point, I need to end this. I want to thank, thank you. you. Go back to your, I have my apologies to your cats and dog for holding you very long. They're okay. Thank you so very much for talking to me tonight. Thank you. And if you want to interview me, I'll let you do it. We'll just find a time to do it. But right. at this thank point, at this point, I need to end this. I want to thank you for talking to me. Thank you, Samia. I, I want to invite you to Pakistan to be my guest, my family's guest. I will be coming. I don't know when, but thank you so very much. We'll, go, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Okay. Let me, please let me end this. Because oh, yes, please, 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 please go back, go back to your cats and dogs. Okay, and I want to just thank everyone for watching, and I want to thank um, the Institute of Peace for peace. sponsoring our Thank you, our Institute of Peace, for making this possible. And we're going to wave goodbye and go off there. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Professor. <laughs>